Hello, welcome to my stick and poke tattoo vlog. This is my fourth tattoo, or technically fifth, because I started one on a friend, but we won't talk about that one right now. Uh, the concept for this, I was listening to a YouTube video about Catchy, an Irish folklore about this giant cat, and I thought it sounded really cool. And then I googled Ratchy, because I like rats a little bit more than I like cats, uh, the thing is, the word she is spelt like Sith in the Star Wars lore, so when you Google rat Sith, you get a bunch of, like, crazy fan art. Highly suggest, 10 out of 10. Cat's name is Mooney. She is present in every video in one way or another. We'll see if now that I'm doing an over-narration, she comes in and vocalizes, because she likes to do that. It's very cute. Back on topic. I was trying to plan out a good contrast for this rat so that I can experiment with filling in and I shouldn't call it experiment. I should get some experience with filling in inks. Uh, if I was going to give you any advice on stencils, what I would probably let you know is I was debating in previous videos about using what is referred to as the onion sheet of your carbon paper, which is that middle sheet that most people throw away. I've decided I don't like the top sheet. I like this thin sheet of onion paper because the top sheet leaves weird paper residue. I'd, uh, uh, also, you, if you use something like stencil stuff, let it get nice and tacky uh, before you put your stencil on to prevent bleeding and also pressure as you saw me put on is your friend. You want to let your stencil air dry for 15-20 minutes, even longer. I've actually put a stencil on just to try out a design and then left it for about an hour and went to go scrub it off and it didn't come off. And even after like three or four showers, that blue carbon stayed on my skin for a while. So if you ever wanted to make temporary tattoos for yourself, like just try out some carbon paper, you know, do some cool Celtic designs work with the blue? Anyway, just an idea. When you first start out poking, you're going to want to start on an outer edge and wipe away from the rest of your stencil to make sure that you don't lose it so that you don't have to be imaginative and fill in any space that you've lost. Most stick and poke artists seem to do an entire pass of their stencil uh, before going back over and doing second, third, fourth, fifth passes. I think it took me five or six passes uh, to get a pretty solid line personally. But yeah, you wanna be careful not to lose what you've put down. As you can see, I'm very cautious uh, trying to use the paper towel to prevent overspray from hitting just the stencil and also rubbing away. Something I'm curious about I don't know if other tattooists have opinions on this, but uh, paper towels seem pretty rough. Is there an ideal brand type? You know, maybe shop towels aren't as rough on the skin, just to prevent the skin from getting red and irritated um, as much as possible, because I think the majority of the irritation comes from having to wipe that ink away. But I'm not really sure. If you could give me some feedback on that, that'd be really cool. Something I went over a bit in my last video was needle sizes. The large skeleton, well actually all the rest of the ink on this leg was done with a three round liner and that was very small and very cumbersome, would not suggest, but this needle is a seven round liner and it carried a lot more ink with it. I am curious about keeping needles clean, you know, is if there's a tighter bundle of needles, does the ink dry up inside it faster? I'm also curious about replacing your needles. Like, at what point do needles get dull? Should I switch out to a fresh needle halfway through? It's not like they're terribly expensive or anything. Um, but yeah, this one's a seven round liner, and I had a much easier time than I did using the three round liner on my other two tattoos on this leg. If you're interested in starting tattooing, even if you would like to use a machine so that you can more efficiently churn out tattoos, I highly suggest trying out hand poke. 
there's a sound that the skin makes and it's really helping me understand the depth of the skin. And as you probably know, your skin has different thicknesses on different parts of your body. So by using this method where you go in by hand and your face is, you know, 12 inches away from your work, you really get a better feel and sound of exactly what you're doing in the skin. And it makes it a lot easier to learn and understand the actual technical art of tattooing. I keep suggesting to people I know who use machines to give it a try and to them it seems like a waste of time, but I'm not out here to do this professionally. This is something I've always been passionate about and I'm wanting to learn it the best way I can. I want to be able to make the best art I can with the most vivid colors and the most character. That's also very important. <laughs>